Hey guys, Caleb here with DSLR Video Shooter, and this is a custom sit-stand desk that is on casters so I can roll it around the studio, but more importantly to me is wireless. There are no power cords or cables going to this thing. It has a battery underneath the desk, and I can roll this thing around and operate it as a sit-stand desk wirelessly, which is one of the most niche random things I've ever built on this channel. So I'm going to call this How to Slowly Destroy Your YouTube Channel Episode 1. And really, the theme of this series is to be building things I want to make that really don't have anything to do with cameras, although this somewhat ties in. I love sit-stand desks. I use them all over the studio. I've got one that is a product photo booth for camera foundry gear. I've got another one for my top-down set where I film a ton of my videos. And I've done countless other projects using desks. The one thing that always stinks though is you have to plug them into the wall. And sometimes you just want to have the freedom to move things around without rolling over cords and whatnot. So that's what this video is all about. But first, a quick disclaimer. No one is sponsoring this video. However, this video is supported by those of you who have purchased my camera gear like Cineback or my camera guides and LUTs. Check the links in the description to learn more and thank you guys so much for the support. So let's go ahead and kick things off by building the desk. We'll throw that little shelf at the very bottom then we'll dive into some electronics. The first thing you're going to need to do is get a desk and really any sit stand desk is going to work for this as long as you pay attention to one very important thing. You'll need to make sure the desk has cabling like this and that it is powered with DC voltage that isn't too high. If you look at the power supply from the desk, I'm going to be modding and I'll put links to everything in the description. You can see that the output is 29.0 volts. That's what we want to see. We don't want to see 60 volts, 100 volts or anything crazy. Look for output and make sure it's, you know, 35 volts or less or so. From there, you can start putting the desk together and hope that your overhead light doesn't fail like mine did in the middle of this video. And at some point, you're going to get to these crossbars or the feet. And most of these desks come with these little plastic pucks that screw in. They're pretty terrible. And I'm going to be replacing them with casters. So I recommend taking these things off and getting one of these thread finders, which are super handy. I'll put a link in the description. You can buy them on Amazon and it helps you find threads of things, which is so handy. And then I found some casters on Amazon with the same post and thread. And we can simply add some nuts and washers if necessary and thread it into the desk and have some really nice locking casters. From there, I finished assembly of the desk and turned my attention to the base. This is really straightforward. I had some scrap plywood laying around, so I just cut some notches in the ends, positioned the desk and used a couple small blocks to keep it from sliding to the left and the right, and then reinstalled it on the desk. Okay, now it's time to talk about power. We need to take this AC adapter and convert it into a battery. So I'm going to try this in two different ways. One with a V mount battery because I just use them for cameras. And then the other is going to be a USB-C power delivery battery. The first thing I'm going to do is cut the end of this cable because we need to use this and not use the AC adapter. So I'm going to make sure I have enough length to be able to work with here. I don't know, a foot or so. And I'm going to go ahead and cut that off. Next, I'm going to use a wire stripper and strip the ends of the cable. All right, so I've stripped back the wires on both the connector as well as the AC adapter because we need to see which one of these wires is positive and which is negative. I'm guessing the black is negative and the red is positive, but I still always recommend testing this. So grab your meter and make sure it's set to your volt setting and that you've got the cables set correctly, black on common, and your red on input or voltage. Now I'm going to set this aside and I'm going to grab our AC connector or AC power adapter and I'm going to plug it in, but I want to make sure that the positive and negative are not touching. So you can see I've bent them away from each other. It's not good for them to touch. That's going to be a problem. So here we go. I'm going to take my probes here, connect black to black, red to red, and we'll read the voltage. Here you can see we're sitting at just under 30 volts, but there's no negative symbol. So that means the red is indeed positive. Now, if I took these and put them backward, then you would see we would have negative 29 volts. So that would mean black is positive, but that's not the case. So now I know that red is positive, black is negative. That means I can wire up my connector the correct way to our battery. And here's everything I'm going to use to make this all work. Now, this might look really scary. Don't worry, I'm going to walk you through the whole thing. I'm going to connect the USB-C from this battery, which is capable of up to 20 volts of power delivery over USB-C, to one of these little trigger boards. It's a tiny itsy bitsy PCB with a USB-C connector, and you can control what kind of voltage comes out of it. Out of the box, it is set up for 20 volts, which is what we want. That is gonna go into this crazy looking PCB board. And this is going to step up our power from 20 volts through these two terminals here out to 30 volts or 29 and a half volts. And that is going to go to our power connector. So 
pretty straightforward stuff. We do need to set up this board though using a little screwdriver. So we're gonna get all that set up now. So first thing I'm going to do is solder on two wires to this little board, red from the positive, and I'm gonna go black from the negative. There we go, very straightforward. And on the other end, I'm gonna connect these wires to the positive and negative in on this PCB board. So you can see in positive and in negative. I'm gonna use those with a little screwdriver here to get this hooked up. Now let's go ahead and test our setup. We have our little USB-C connector with a wire going to the input of this board. The output I have connected to my multimeter and I tested it a second ago. That's why we've got a little bit of voltage here. Uh, but we're going to go ahead and hook this up. So we've got the battery here. I'm going to take my USB-C cable from the battery, connect it to this little trigger board, and that's going to send power into our board. And now we're looking at 22.66 volts. So a little higher than the 20 volts uh, that is coming out of this USB-C battery. And it's really important to use a USB-C power delivery battery that can do 20 volts. This because that's what we need for this. Five volts isn't going to cut it. Okay, so with that done, I can now actually take a small screwdriver and start messing with this little blue potentiometer right in here. There's another one right down here. You can see it's got a little brass, tiny itty bitty uh, flathead screw. So I've got a flathead screwdriver here and I'm going to adjust this itty bitty little potentiometer and you can watch the voltage change over here. So I found if you turn it to the left, it'll raise the voltage. So here we're slowly creeping up and our goal is to get to that 29.5 volts that we had and saw on our AC adapter. So I'm just turning it to the left, I'm gonna keep turning it, 29.5 is my goal. Boom, I'm gonna call that good at 29.54 volts. So we've got 20 volts coming out of our USB-C power delivery battery into the board. It's jumping it up to, or stepping it up to 29.54. Now we can turn this off and disconnect the terminals here going into the output. At this point, I could simply connect the cable to the output. So red to positive, black to negative, and we'd be done. We could mount this whole setup underneath the desk. And when we connect a USB-C battery to that little jack there, it would go ahead and send power. But I'm going to put a button on here so I have to press and hold the button for this setup to work so I'm not draining my battery. All right, in the end, this is what I have. We've got the USB battery, USB-C into our little board, and then what I did is I cut the red wire and installed this momentary button. So when I press and hold the button down, that will allow power to go to our board and by extension, our desk. So it'll be powered and I'll be able to use it. Right here, I'm gonna interrupt myself and say, don't use a momentary button switch. Use a latching or regular on off switch. While this button worked great, I did find that if I let go of the button too quickly after operating the desk, the desk would give me an error code and I would have to reconnect the power supply that came with the desk to fix it and recalibrate it. So not a huge deal, it's totally fixable, but it's just a huge hassle. So just go with your regular old on off switch like this one on screen. And I'll put links to this and everything else in the description. The reason I did a momentary, which means you have to hold it down for power to go through the switch is because I've done several desks like this and I keep forgetting to turn the power switch off and then my battery just drains all the way. So this way I have to press and hold the button, then I can activate the switches on the desk. When I'm done, we're Working with the desk, I can let go and it's not going to be drawing power from this board. Now it might draw some power from this trigger switch, but you might be able to find an inline USB-C switch on Amazon or something. But this is what I had. And I also decided not to include an output or a power connector for the AC adapter, just because I need to get this video done. And I can always install one of these super simple screw on terminals if I want to reverse this whole project and go back to using the power brick. But I never intend to use that because why? I have batteries, so I'm gonna go with that instead. So now let's go ahead and install this thing on the desk. To install everything underneath the desk, you can use all kinds of fancy enclosures and whatnot. I just ended up screwing this board, which has a hole in each corner, onto the bottom of the desk and use super glue for the switch. Don't use the button, use a switch, as well as the USB-C connector, which eventually popped back off. But because I didn't have a lot of time to mess with this, I just zip tied everything back underneath there. And I'm using USB-C power delivery to power this desk, which almost all of my V-mount batteries have from small rig. So I use this V-mount quick release that I had laying around and screwed it to the bottom of the desk so I can mount batteries and just plug them directly in using a right angle cable connector. Now, if you've been doing video for a while and have a bunch of V-mount batteries and a bunch of random V-mount 
around plates laying around, you could modify these things and use them instead of USB-C. So if you have a plate like this with a red and black or positive and negative wire coming off of them, you can do the exact same thing we've been doing in this video, but instead of using USB-C, you'll use a V-mount plate and its wires going into the board. So that's gonna do it for this video on building a wireless sit stand desk. If you've made it thus far, incredible. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day and we'll see you guys in our next video.